Welcome, I'm Matt Ashton, a trainer for the Provider Relations Unit with Medicaid Customer Services at the Healthcare Authority, and I will be the presenter for today's video resource. We wanted to tackle a topic that comes up frequently for any of you who bill us secondarily to Medicare, but may have mistakenly entered Medicare as commercial insurance. This video resource will cover making the needed corrections and what those options are. So who is this video training for? It is for any biller submitting claims to healthcare authority as secondary to Medicare. A lot of times it can be confusing as to why your claim denied for commercial insurance. This resource might save you a phone call to our customer service center. We will make sure it is published on our Learn Provider One web pages so you can easily access it in the future for claim corrections. All right, let's get started. Let's cover the goals of this video and the outcome we hope for. You build Medicare as primary and now have commercial insurance denials that make no sense for the claim that was submitted. In this presentation, the following objectives will be covered. One, recognize the error codes that will deny my claim when billing Medicare as commercial insurance. Two, understand that other payer in provider one refers to commercial insurance not Medicare. Three, learn how to expand each of the other payer areas to remove information if correcting using direct data entry. And lastly, know how to use direct data entry to enter the required Medicare information to resubmit your claim. Here is a quick overview of the crossover process in general. Most crossover claims are processed and forwarded directly to provider one and if billed correctly, process without any issue. The crossover process is covered in detail in the Provider One Billing and Resource Guide with the link provided here. But here are a few reasons Medicare cannot forward your claim to us. Perhaps your NPI number is unrecognized by Provider One. It may be a new Medicare enrollee. Part C plans may not cross over or there may be data exchange issues. With many of these denials, the problem stems from an electronic claim received in Provider 1 with Medicare data contained in the commercial payer area. Provider 1 will deny your claim assuming there is a commercial payer and behave as such when it adjudicates. Provider 1 denies the claim with either a 22 or a 16 adjustment reason code. There may be other remark codes listed as well. You have two options to resolve the denial. You can submit a new electronic crossover claim through your clearinghouse or EDI software, or resubmit using the direct data entry option in the Provider One portal. Option number one for resubmitting your claim electronically would be through your clearinghouse or EDI software. Using your clearinghouse and your EDI software vendor to get a new claim submitted would be the quickest option for correction. We have provided the 5010 EDI companion guides as well as a fact sheet to assist with HIPAA, EDI loop and segment details. Both resources can be found on the links noted here on the slide. The second option and the topic we will focus on in the next several slides will be correcting your claim using the Provider One portal. You will need to use a claim submitter profile to access the claim section of the portal. Using the Provider Portal is a quick and efficient method of correcting an EDI claim. And Provider One is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and has zero transaction fees. The first step is choosing the correct submission option. For a denied claim, choose the hyperlink titled resubmit denied slash voided claim. If you have the TCN, enter it in the TCN field. If you do not, you will need the client ID and the dates of service at a minimum. Click submit for the data entered. Provider one will bring up your list of claims. All you have to do is check the box next to the TCN and click the Retrieve button above the Provider Claims Model List heading. The system will find your original claim and take you to the claim screen 
with the original received claim data entered. Just a refresher of the claim form itself in the system without any data filled in. This is the top half of the claim containing the provider information, client information, and claim level sections. This is the bottom half of the claim screen with the basic line item information area. You would see your build, service codes, units, and charges below the gray bar. Here's some important reminders when using direct data entry to correct claims that were submitted EDI. Electronic claims contain more data than needed when submitted to provider one. All the additional data must be removed from the other payer section. If something is missed or an area is not cleared out correctly, the claim will deny again. The following slides will explain this process in more detail. On the direct data claim form, each item is marked with the red plus or red minus for the expanding and collapsing of each area. You have to start at the top of the other insurance information section and work your way down carefully, removing every bit of detail so provider one does not assume there is a commercial payer on your claim. As you can see, once you click on the plus for one other payer insurance information, several more expandable sections appear that will require action on your part to remove any excess data showing. Remove any policy numbers or names as shown on this slide. As you move through each frame, remove any information, including resetting any drop-down boxes. Remove all paid amounts, even if a zero or decimal point, and continue checking remaining areas down to add another. Here are some really important reminders. You will wanna open up every red plus sign to verify that each field is empty and each drop-down area is reset. You will want to keep them open as you go so you know you have checked every one of them. Lastly, you will want to work your way back up to the top of the other payer area, closing each minus sign ensuring everything has been removed and every area has been collapsed. Once the Medicare detail has been removed from the other payer sections on the claim form, you will need to answer yes to the required question, is this a Medicare crossover claim? Every field with the red asterisk must be completed from the detail on the Medicare EOB. The totals here must equal the sum of all totals on the service lines. To add the Medicare crossover data at the service line section, scroll down to the basic service line area and click on the line number highlighted in blue that you want to edit. Now it is time to add your Medicare information to the line level. Provider 1 should have repopulated the basic service line item data from the line number that you have chosen. Click the red plus expander titled Medicare Crossover Items. Enter any amount from the Medicare EOB for that specific service, completing every field marked with a red asterisk. Once your entries are complete, you must click the Update Service Line Item button. That will save the new information added to your service line. Be sure to complete these same steps for each service line on the claim. If all your Medicare items have been added to the service lines, click the Submit button at the top of the claim form. A pop-up box will appear asking if you have backup documentation to submit with the claim. This is not necessary as you have entered the Medicare information onto the claim. Click Cancel on this pop-up. The final confirmation screen will appear and provide you with basics for the claim such as the new TCN, NPI, client ID, data service, and total claim charges, 
write down your claim number for tracking and proceed to the final submit button. The final submit button will need to be clicked to finalize the claim submission. Here is the link to the Healthcare Authority Learn Provider 1 webpage. To review this video resource again at a later time, click on the hyperlink titled Webinars. This webinar link will also have additional information and training for billing staff. This concludes the video resource training on the correction of Medicare crossover claims that were submitted as commercial insurance in Provider 1. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen and watch this video. Following the steps provided here should allow you to resolve the crossover denial issues on your own. If you still need additional support, please refer to the contact information listed on this slide.